So right off the bat, I have a really good tip for you, especially if you drive DoorDash. My name is Matt. I am Mike's twin brother on his channel, Your Driver Mike. So I'm going to take you along with me. So we just drove a really good stacked order on DoorDash. And the specific tip is this. So I got my first order from Chipotle. And typically there are certain locations of the Chipotles around Pittsburgh that really have it together or are really slow. And you'll learn that after you start driving driving, which restaurants have it together and which ones are slow. Well, I took a gamble and I went to this restaurant and while I was picking up the Chipotle, I got an extra order, a stacked order on top of that initial Chipotle and it was at the same exact Chipotle restaurant. So my first order was from Chipotle for a little over $7 and I thought, well, for the miles that it's showing me and the pay, it's a fairly decent way to start my shift. But I got to the Chipotle and check this out. I got a $6 stacked order, which is an extra order on top of my current order at the very same Chipotle. So I thought, well, is this order going to be ready because I just received it? But if you look at the map on this stacked order, it's a really short trip. So for $6, I'm going to take this all day long. But where's the tip in all of this? In DoorDash specifically, you can actually jump to a task. So the app had me initially delivering the first order and then going right back to the same Chipotle to pick up the second order. Well, check this out. You can actually go into the app and jump to a task. So I went ahead and basically skipped that delivery process just in case that stacked order was ready and lo and behold, it was ready. So instead of going all the way to the customer to come back, I jumped to that next task and I picked up that order while I was already at the restaurant. So now I got both of them in my car and we can more quickly deliver both of those orders to the customer. So in recent videos on the ride alongs where we take you along with us on the road, we talk about your strategy and it is Sunday at the time I'm making this video and it's another big game here in Pittsburgh starting in about an hour and 20 minutes. So big football game. And if you live in an area that does have uh, any type of sports team and fans that really get uh, excited about the big game, that's when you wanna drive. Even on these nice days, it's been completely busy, but why is it busy? Yes, there's a game, people are ordering pizza and all kinds of snacks, but it's also because I'm multi-apping. Excuse, excuse the traffic, um, but I'm multi-apping, and that means I'm driving with more than one app at the same time. So initially, I started with DoorDash. Let's see if I continue getting DoorDash orders or is it going to shift to Uber Eats? And it was really interesting. I got an Uber Eats yesterday and it made reference to Postmates. And if you're unaware, uh, Uber Eats acquired Postmates, but the fact that it kind of reminds you in the app was uh, kind of interesting. So let's continue along. I'm gonna keep giving you tips and at the end of the video, stick around. We're gonna see how much money we made. So it seems like one of the slower restaurants in Pittsburgh have finally turned it around. Chipotle in Oakland, which is near all the universities. Here's what happened. I picked up two orders. So I got a stacked order at the same time. So really been doing well with Chipotle this morning, but there were probably 12 bags of food lined up on the shelf to choose from. And my customer's name was Jordan. And one thing you wanna do is, well, one thing you don't wanna do is leave with a wrong bag. And how would you possibly do this? Well, I thought, well, there's probably no way that there'd be two customers named Jordan, but you'll wanna double check because I happened to glance and there were in fact two customers named Jordan. So you don't wanna make the mistake of just grabbing it, seeing the name and leaving, especially obviously if there are a lot of bags. So make sure to double check the name because in uh, areas that are really popular, there's a ton of different food deliveries happening. Don't make the mistake of assuming you see the correct name and that is your customer. So moving on to our next orders, and again, we're analyzing the strategy here because I picked up a fairly good Starbucks order and then an order from Sejuan Gourmet, but if you take a look at the mileage, both are under two miles and the one is under one mile, uh, yet I'm making over $7. So even though it's not those huge $15 orders that you're really hoping for, what you also want to look at is how far the trip is going to take you. And in this instance, these are both relatively quick orders. I did not have to wait long for over $7 with really little miles. I'm 100% going to take this. So this is exactly what you want to look for. 
either those larger earning trips where maybe you're driving $1.75 to $2 pay per mile, that's what we wanna see you at, how much am I getting paid for the miles driven, or you have really, really low miles where even if it's a seven or $8 trip, it's totally worth it. So we see a theme here in our next two orders with Howley and Stacked coming in, both over $7. So again, I think it's really because it's a good time of day to drive. Again, if you have any type of big sporting events, you get a lot of frequency. So I've seen a lot of those really strong $7 to $9 orders. And then come the dinner rush a little later this evening, you're more likely to see those family size portions, if you will, or $15 orders, $10 plus dollar orders. But if you string enough $8 orders together, you're gonna be well on your way for around $30 an hour, typically. Now, of course, there's no earnings guarantee, but this is exactly what we want for you, choices and frequency. So make sure to multi-app and sign up with all three apps. My brother, uh, my twin brother, Mike, just got signed up with Grubhub. Watch his video on how to sign up if you're not already on Grubhub. But this is exactly what uh, we want you to see. So let's continue this shift and see what we get next. So speaking of Grubhub, now recently they've made some changes, some really, really big changes to the app. So if you're a current driver or you're thinking about driving on Grubhub, they have recently started to add the mileage on your request. And this is a pretty big deal because we want to see you have a dollar per mile that's obviously pretty high. So if you're getting a $10 order and you're driving 10 miles, then obviously you're getting paid a dollar per mile. We would like you more near $2 pay per mile. So if you look at my last order, it's uh, another strong seven plus dollar order uh, from Masala House and it doesn't show me the mileage. But again, like I said, I think they're starting to roll out this um, update to drivers. So that's really good news and it'll let you make an even smarter decision but it seems like today I'm really uh, riding the coattails of these seven plus dollar orders. So we'll continue on and see how the rest of the day shapes up. So you guessed it, another $7 order, but this one from Starbucks, only 0.9 miles. So really this is kind of best case scenario. And don't be fooled that just because it's not a 13 or $15 order, that this isn't exactly what we want because we're really driving a short trip and the dollars pay per mile again are really, really good. So another good order from Starbucks, let's keep it going. So it's the same day and I took a quick break and I went to the gym, which is why I'm wearing this, but I'm still driving food delivery and I'm finishing up my shift. I picked up two really good nine plus dollar orders and it's around 5.30, but again, um, I took these a little earlier uh, before I went to the gym and they're nine plus dollars because as you see it get closer to that delivery uh, dinner rush time, you'll see these uh, tend to be higher orders. Now, of course, there's no guarantee, uh, but I want you to know I do this part-time. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I have a full-time job, maybe I have uh, children, um, I'm not sure if this is really right for me. Um, we're gonna go over exactly how much you can make. And of course, it's all about following the tips, learning your marketplace, multi-apping to give yourself the best chance. But let's take a look at these orders. Uh, the first from Double Wide Grill. Again, really solid order, a short trip, and it was on Grubhub, so we can't see how far in miles the trip is, but of course, you can look on the map and see that it's a relatively short trip. So these are the kind of trips that you can get, and again, even if you're a part-time driver, um, as you follow these strategies, you'll see that it can be very consistent. So that's exactly what we want for you is consistency. So my last order, again, nine plus dollars, very low mileage was right back into Oakland at Campus Deli. Now, when I got there and something I've been seeing on Grubhub lately, so I wanna know your thoughts if you drive really any platform. I've seen more often where I get there and the restaurant just got the order. Even though I might be three or four minutes away, uh, the logistics of when they get the order, it's, it's basically, I get there, they, they tell me we just got that order and I have to wait a few minutes. Now, being that this was my last trip, I went ahead and decided to wait. 
but that's really up to you. And even with all that driving, you can see I hit a challenge bonus from DoorDash, a very gracious $5 from DoorDash. Hey, I'll take it. So the challenges are those extra incentives on top of your orders. So there are cash incentive typically for completing a certain amount of orders. So in this case, it's $5. Hey, I'm not complaining, but this is exactly the strategy that you should follow. If you have those big games in your area, if you want to take those shorter trips and stack together a few shorter trips for seven or eight dollars these are all ways to make a pretty considerable hourly rate um, so I would just pass along the only way you're gonna know what your marketplace looks like is to get out there drive with me back to the home office we're gonna go over all the numbers see exactly how well we did given the hours driven so this shift was a pretty average shift I think as far as how long I was on the road so let's go ahead and break down what that means and get back to the home office so I'm actually heading back to the house after some errands and I thought you know what I wrote them all down this is the perfect place to go over how much money we made so let's just jump right into the numbers and see how these numbers from the shift break down so this shift was from 11 20 a.m. to 3 20 p.m. in that short amount of time I grossed ninety dollars and fifty nine cents I did pause for about 30 minutes, so that comes to an hourly rate of $25.88. I completed 11 deliveries. I earned tips on 10 of the 11 deliveries, averaging $3.96. I drove a total of 27 business miles for a payout per mile, $3.35. Based on those mileage, my tax deduction is $15.12. So something I want you to focus on is $25 an hour might not seem like the 30 or 35 or $40 an hour we've made in other videos, but take a look at the $90 that I made in a matter of three and a half hours. That's a fairly solid amount if you're trying to reach a goal, maybe you're a part-time driver like I am. Now, that's almost the minimum what I tend to make, $25 an hour. Now, there's no earnings guarantee, but if you're following the strategies, maybe you're driving around those big football games, $25 an hour, it's pretty doable. So that's exactly what we want you to get to is a fairly strong hourly earnings. So again, my name is Matt. I am Mike's twin brother on his channel, Your Driver Mike. If you do like this content, make sure to drop a like and subscribe so we both know that you enjoyed this video and make sure to click or tap the screen here for a video recommended to you and we'll see you in the next one.